Hello Pythons. Welcome to a brand new video tutorial, and for today, I'll explain Python automation for beginners, using PyAuto GUI library. Since I received so many requests, about people want a brief explanation, on how to start with Python automation step by step, even if you have no coding skills. That's why this full course, will be split in three videos. And for this video, it will be about PyAuto GUI, where I'll work on two projects in front of you. Telegram bot, and Instagram bot. And for the next videos, they will be about browser automation using Selenium, and web scraping using Beautiful Soup. But for now, let's focus on PyAuto GUI. We will start first by installing the basic requirements. So go to Google, and type download Python. Open the first link. Make sure to install the latest version of Python, by clicking on this yellow button. Go to CMD, and type Python dash dash version. As you can see, I've already the latest version of Python. Now let's see the next requirement. We need to download a text editor, where we can write our Python code. I highly recommend you to download Visual Studio Code, it's beginner friendly, and more helpful. Also VS Code supports multi-operating systems. Move on to the next step. We will create a new folder for our project, I'll name it for example, PyAuto GUI Tutorial. Open it. Go to the path of this folder, and type cmd. In this step, we need to install PyAuto GUI library. If you visit this link, you can see the command, that you need to write in order to install PyAuto GUI. So this library, allows you to control the mouse and keyboard, and other GUI automation tasks. So copy the command, and paste it in cmd. After the installation is complete, we will write another command so we can open our text editor. So type code dot, and Visual Studio code will open. So this is the place where we create our folders, and our Python files. We will start by creating a new file. I'll name it for example, telegram underscore message dot pi. Now coding time. So in order to use pi auto GUI library, we need to import it, in our file project. So you can simply write, import, pi auto GUI. Also, we will import another module, called time. For this module, you will see later how I'll use it. So as I said before, PyAuto GUI lets your Python scripts, control the mouse and keyboard. And what we want exactly is, once we run our script, the mouse should move to the Chrome browser icon, and click on it. Then, the script should write this URL, and click on Enter. After that, our bot should click on the first contact and spam a specific message for 10 times. This simple bot will let you know the basics of Python automation by controlling the mouse and keyboard. Let's see how we can make this. We will start by writing print pi auto GUI dot position. So what this function does, it will print the coordinates of my mouse position as it currently. And it happens instantly once I run the code. For example, if I run the code now, and I didn't move the mouse. The script will give me, the position of my mouse as it currently. Which of course it will writes, the coordinates of this point. So in order to open, our Chrome browser, I need to know first, the coordinates of this point. So obviously, once I will run the code, I should move the mouse to this area. And because of the script runs immediately, I need to give some time for me, so I can move the mouse freely. That's why, we will use the time module. And we will write, time, dot sleep, and I will give myself 3 seconds, before the script prints, the coordinates of my mouse position. Now if I run the code again, and I move the mouse right here. After 3 seconds, the script will print the coordinates, of my mouse position as it currently. For the next step, we will write another function, where we tell the script, once we run our code, the mouse should move automatically to the coordinates, that we printed before. So type, pi auto GUI, dot, move to, open the brackets. So here, we need to add the previous coordinates, that we printed. Now if we run the code, after 3 seconds, the mouse will move to our Chrome browser. For slow motion, if you want to see the movement of your mouse, we can add another parameter. For example, I'll add 2 seconds. If we run our code again, 
we can literally see the mouse is moving to our Chrome browser. Now, let's discover the click function. We actually have various type of clicks. There is left click, right click, double click, and triple click, depends on your needs. In my case, I will just use the left click. Also, I will change the duration of my mouse movement to one second. Let's see the result. As you can see, the script moved the mouse to our Chrome browser and used the left click function to open the browser. All right, guys, that's fine till now. Let's do extra changes. We can give the Pi Auto GUI library a nickname. For example, PG. And in every time we want to type Pi Auto GUI, we will instead write PG. Also, we can write these two lines of code in one line. Copy the coordinates and paste them in the left click function. Then we need to add two extra parameters. The first one is how many clicks the function should do. The second one is the speed duration of the mouse movement. Now, let's see how this will perform. Great, everything works properly. So the next step after we open the Chrome browser, the bot should type the Telegram link. In order to do that, we have two functions, we can type pg.write or pg.typewrite. Both functions do the same thing, we use them to type something in a text field. Then we need to add the press function, so our bot click on enter. Also, don't forget to add time sleep between each process. Let's run the script now. The bot will open the Chrome browser and type the link we added, then it will click enter. We're almost done guys. Now, we need to know the coordinates of this area. So in order to know that, we will use again the position function that we used before. We will comment these scripts so they don't run. And we will only run the position function. As you can see, these are the coordinates that we need. We will write the left click function and add the new position details. One more last step, the only thing we need to add is writing a code that allows us to send a message 10 times automatically. We will type 4 i in range and here add the number of times you want to send the message. For loops used to run the same code over and over again, if you still find some difficulties in these basic stuffs, I highly recommend you to watch this video where I talked about the fundamentals of Python that everyone must know so you don't get stuck in basic codes. I'll make sure to leave the link in the description. Inside this loop, we will write the message we want to send using typewrite function and adding the press function as well. Now, I think our bot is completely ready to run. Let's try it. As you can see guys, we were able to make it and our bot spammed the message automatically using Pi Auto GUI library. This is pretty cool guys, hope you try this out and let me know in the comments below how you find it. Now we will move to the next project. Instagram bot. For the Instagram bot, I've already made the script for you, so we don't waste too much time in coding. But I'll explain everything written here. First let's see what this bot does. We should already log in in our Instagram account. Then the bot will go to the search text field and search for hashtag Python. After that, it will click on the first post and like the post by double tap on it. Also, it will leave a random comment. Then he will move on to the next post and do the same process. This bot is more useful to grow your Instagram account by liking and commenting on posts that related to your niche content. If you want to be more serious in your project, you can add an extra script that follow, unfollow people, also send DMs to them. This will be more challenging. Now let's take a look on the code. As you can see, the code is well documented, so you can understand what every function do. As always, we imported the same libraries, Pi Auto GUI, and the time module. And obviously you can see the new modules we added, keyboard, and random. I've already told you, that to write something, we use the typewrite function. But unfortunately, that function, doesn't support the hashtag character. 
So in order to write hashtag, we use the keyboard module. For the next functions, are about the left click. And we are already explained that. The other new thing you can notice here, is this list of words, that I wrote. So what I'm trying to do here. When the bot get into the for loop, and like the post, using the double click function. Then it will try to leave a comment, by picking a random word, from the list words I wrote, using the random module. Actually, this operation may look kinda difficult for you. But in fact, it's so easy to write this kind of code, if you already know the fundamentals of Python. That's why, I assure to watch the previous video I made if you still didn't watch it. Lastly, it will click on the button, that direct him to the next post. Now let's run the code, and see the result. After 3 seconds, the bot will type, hashtag python, and click on it. Then it will click on the first post. And start liking the image, and leaving a random comment, from the list words we made. As you can see, everything works the way we want, without any issues. My only advice for you now, is to not overuse these scripts, so you don't get blocked. So make sure to use them wisely. I hope guys you understand the basics of Python automation, using Pi Auto GUI library. So, working on projects, will definitely improve your coding skills. And I will make sure to leave these two projects, on my GitHub repository, so check the description please. Also, I will include this Python file, where you can find, the most used scripts, about Pi Auto GUI library. And also, some small projects, like TikTok Liker. For more informations, and advanced features about Pi Auto GUI, you can check this documentation, which you will find it in the description below, where you can find everything you want to know about this library, and maybe you will discover some other stuffs, that we didn't talk about. So that's it for today. For the next videos, they will be about Selenium, and web scraping with beautiful soup. These two libraries, will allow us to do more advanced stuffs, that Pi Auto GUI can't do. Don't forget guys to give this video a big thumbs up, and subscribe as well if you still not. See you in the next video.